guys, it's Mike Stenhouse here, host of the Inside Property Investing Podcast. And I've just been reading through the Sunday Times Rich List 2015 and thought I would share some of the insights with you about how property factors into the wealth in Britain. You can see I've been through it, I've made quite a lot of notes on all the property movers and shakers. And there were a couple of key things that I thought it was worth spending a few minutes calling out to fellow property investors to see if it can help you in your own property journey, or at least just help you understand the current property climate in the UK. So before I dive into the rich list itself and speak about some of the specific people that crop up in it, there's just a couple of points that I want to bring to your attention. The first of which is that out of the top 100 richest people in the UK, 24 of them have property as a significant contributor to their wealth. Now, obviously, some of these people will have bought property after they have made their money in other industries. But equally, a lot of these people, their main wealth stems from property, either inheriting it or developing it. And I just think it's a phenomenal proportion. Almost a quarter of the 100 wealthiest people in the UK believe that property is a good asset. And if it's good enough for them, quite frankly, it's, it's good enough for me as well. The other thing that stood out to me, surprised me actually, was that commercial property interests appear to lead to more wealth than residential. There are a couple of residential developers, a couple of residential landlords on the list, but a lot of the people with the serious wealth from building property, owning property, managing property comes from commercial, whether that be shops, hotels, airports, that sort of thing. And it made me think all of the conversations about property investing at networking meetings online it all seems to stem around residential and I'm just wondering it's made me think is there a real gap there to go after commercial property and start to build our wealth that way so it's certainly something I'll be looking into and then finally it seems to be the case that the new money people who have built up their wealth through property have done so through construction and development and perhaps I'm stating the obvious here but to me, again, it was just interesting to note that the development side of things is better for creating wealth in the first place. The older kind of aristocratic wealth is with the landowners, the landlords. And, you know, to me, again, it was just um, quite a stark contrast that the people who were really interested in creating wealth were the ones that were going out there improving properties building properties rather than just buying it to hold on to certainly it seems like buying to hold is a great place to store your money but in terms of growing your money as quickly as pro possible construction and development seems to be the way forward there so now if we dive into the list what i want to do is just highlight some of the top players in the top 100 so that's 24 of the richest people in the uk and then look at the details of some of the ones that come a bit further down the list as well, just if they've got a particularly interesting story. So the richest person who attributes his wealth to property is actually two guys, David and Simon Rubin, Mumbai-born brothers. They're number five in the overall list with £9.7 billion worth of wealth, quite a phenomenal number. And they own London Oxford Airport. They've got properties across Europe and they've also got a boutique chain of hotels. They are also developing Cambridge House in Piccadilly into Britain's most expensive home, which is going to be worth more than £200 million. So phenomenal development there. Then the second richest, number nine in the overall list, is the Duke of Westminster. Uh, so he's got the Grosvenor family estate, which is 300 acres across prime West London, which has been in his family for about 400 years or something. And his company is also, uh, it, in 2013, it doubled its development pipeline to six billion pounds um, predominantly in the UK so they're obviously investing a huge amount of money in property at the moment number 13 on the list the third richest property person is well again it's another two people Sir David and Sir Frederick Barclay uh, they're predominantly based on hotels um, and then number 18 on the list is Earl Cadogan and his family they bought almost 200 properties last July alone, so they're obviously investing hugely as well. And it's promising to see that a lot of these people aren't just holding on to property. They are significantly expanding their portfolios, which again fills me with confidence. He's done particularly well from the London property price boom uh, with 93 acres owned in Chelsea alone. Then a bit further down the list, we come to Sir Henry Keswick and family. He's number six 
in the property list, number 25 overall, with 3.2 billion pounds worth of wealth. And he's the first one we get to who's got significant property holdings in Hong Kong. There are a couple others in the list that I'll point out as we get to them. Number 27 in the rich list, number seven in my property list, is Baroness Howard de Walden. Howard de Walden and his family. And they control 90 acres of central London. I don't know if any of you saw the um, show earlier in the week on uh, Channel 4, I think it was, but this is the family that own most of Harley Street, and they control which medical practices are allowed to operate there purely because they control the freehold style of properties and decide which tenants they want in there. So uh, if you're ever looking for any sort of cosmetic surgery, just think a lot of the money you're spending is probably going to be lining these guys' pockets as the property owners round about Harley Street. Then number 31 in the overall rich list worth three billion pounds are Ian and Richard Livingston. Again, brothers in their 50s, um, UK based, they've got three and a half million square feet of property developments in the pipeline in London alone. So again, investing a lot of money. Then we get to Eddie and Saul Zakai, 31st equal again with three billion, number nine in the overall property list. And they are, they're, they're making a lot of money from, from lending. So they lent 400 million pounds for property deals and developments. Um, they've diversified into hotels, but they're, as I say, doing a lot of property lending and also a lot of joint ventures. Number 35 on the list with a little under £3 billion pounds worth of wealth is Mark Piers and his family. So there are three Piers brothers that uh, Mark leads the business. Um, and they've got thousands of London homes, flats and office blocks worth £6 billion pounds in total. Then you've got Teddy Saggy, number 39 on the list, £2.5 billion, number 11 on the property list. Number 12 on the property list is the Swire family, and number 13 is John Whitaker and his family. Uh, he is number 43 on the overall list, and he has got 2.37 billion pounds worth of wealth. Now, his predominantly, he owns a company called The Peel Group. You might have heard of them from shopping centers, airports, including John Lennon Airport in Liverpool, and Salford's Media City. I know certainly being based in the northwest, Salford's Media City is a huge draw for HMO investors. So again, he's got a, a big impact to play in the overall property climate in the UK. Number 14 on the list is Sammy Lee Tak Yee and his family. Uh, he owns the Langham Estate between Soho and Mayfair. Um, and again, he's another one that's got significant assets in Hong Kong as well as Tokyo and Switzerland. Number 15 on the property list, 55 in the overall list, worth 1.7 billion is Viscount Portman and family. Uh, they're London landowners. And then number 59 on the overall list, number 16 on the property list, another set of brothers, Eddie and Malcolm Healy. So Eddie's claim to fame is with uh, retail parks. He sold a retail park in Wales for 156 million. He made 420 million from the sale of the Meadow Hall Center uh, outside Sheffield. Malcolm, on the other hand, is most famous for Hygiena Kitchens, that brand, if you're familiar with them. He built and sold Hygiena Kitchens for $200 million in the UK and then went across to the US and repeated the process there, building up the brand and selling that for a further $800 million. So a total of £1 billion pounds from selling Hygiena Kitchens across those two countries. Uh, 16, uh, Poju and Anita Zabludovic. Forgive my pronunciation there. Um, but again, their business centers around property and hotels. Then Chris Lazari, number 17 on the property list, 65th equal on the overall rich list, worth 1.4 billion. Um, he made his money elsewhere. Uh, he came to Britain to work in the fashion industry and then later diversified into property. So again, just showing it's a good place to store your wealth as well once you've made it. Number 18 is Benzie and Freshwater and family. They have got a London property group. Then down to number 19 on the list, 75th equal in the top 100. 1.3 billion pounds is George and Emily von Opel. Number 20 on the property list, 80th in the top 100 rich list is Bernard Lewis and his family worth one and a quarter billion pounds. So, you know, we're getting down to kind of paltry sums of money here. Number 21, on the property list worth 1.2 billion is Sheikh Hamad bin Jassim Al Thani. Again, my pronunciation is probably not what it should be, 
but they own some of London's most prestigious addresses. Uh, he was the main backer for One Hyde Park, the luxury development project by the Candy Brothers, who are actually not on the rich list this year. 88 in the overall 100, number 22. And this guy is particularly interesting for all of us. John Hunt, if you don't know that name, uh, he has a commercial property portfolio worth more than 560 million. He actually started building this up after he sold the business that he started. The, he was the former owner of Foxton's estate agency, one of the most notorious estate agencies in London, which he sold in 2007 for 375 million. So he's not been at uh, his own property portfolio for a huge amount of time, about eight years, but obviously he had a nice little sum of money to start that with. Then number 24 in the property list, the last one in the top 100, number 93 in the top 100 worth 1.1 billion is John Christodoulou. Um, so he's Cypriot again, and he bought his first property in 1994, a uh, studio flat in London and uses the profits to develop property. So he's, you know, a, a lot like some of the people I meet on a daily basis, just bought one property and gone from there. He now runs Canary Wharf based Yanis Holdings, which has got 291 million pounds worth of assets. So uh, that includes hotels, um, Manchester's Hilton Tower, which is a big landmark up in the Northwest. Um, and he's got overseas assets worth 600 million. I think his is a really interesting story, obviously. Uh, you know, in the space of 20 years from one property has built up uh, a, a, an asset base um, worth over a billion pounds. Now, just outside the top 100, uh, number 25 in the property list is Lord Sugar. He might be a little bit upset he didn't quite make it into the top 100, but with uh, over a billion pounds worth of wealth, I'm sure he's not particularly bothered. Obviously, he started off with Amstrad, the electronics company and he turned his attention to the London property market after he sold that in 2007 for 125 million. Uh, he also bought a 23 million pound building in the neighborhood of area that's becoming the kind of Silicon Valley of London um, and spent a further 20 million pounds on properties last year through his Amsprop business. Uh, so that made a profit of nearly 50 million on a Mayfair office block in 2013. So that's the top 25 property people in the UK. Um, the other people that are of significant interest, uh, number 128 on the overall rich list, uh, Raj Mataru and his family. So I, I just thought the way they made their money was quite interesting. They're worth 850 million and they made their fortune turning empty office space into hotels. And it's an interesting one. There's so much empty office space in the UK, there's just no demand for it, really. Well, there, of course, there is demand, but it is, it, demand is, is sloping off in a lot of areas, so these offices do sit empty. And whether it's turning it into hotels or HMOs or just turning it back into residential, there is a real um, opportunity there, particularly with permitted development, uh, to, to change the use of those buildings. And that's what these guys have done particularly well. Um, you know, now worth 850 million pounds. Then we've got Peter Jones and his family, number 154 on the list, and they own a company called Emerson Developments based in Alderley Edge, which is just five minutes down the road from me. They made profits of 33 million in 2014. Um, so obviously a lot of money to be made in the Northwest for all you people down in London who are saying that, you know, never invest in the North. It's just where uh, all you paupers live. So. That's just my little, I'm just putting that in there to remind everyone based down in London that there are other places to make money and property outside London. Then if we jump far, far, far down the list, 968th equal, worth about £100 million, we get Judith and Fergus Wilson there. They're kind of celebrities in the property world. They are the ex-teachers who started building up their portfolio and they've now decided to sell it off. So they've got about 1,000 buy-to-let properties in Kent and for whatever reason, um, they are now selling them off. I know there's a little bit of concern in Kent that if they put them all on the market, the market would crash. It's nice to have that much control over your local property market, but I'm sure they would be more sensible in their approach. Then what I want to do is drop down into the 50 young rich list. So these guys don't quite make it into the overall 100 rich list. Um, but number 15 on the 50 young rich list. So these are people under 30 is a guy called Chris Phillips. 
and he's worth 45 million pounds um he started off with an internet based business and then diversified into property again and he now has 150 rental properties um it's his main focus has switched to the property group just develop um with it says here 13.6 million pounds worth of assets in 2014 he also owns restaurants a country club and a nightclub so there you have it my rundown of the 2015 sunday times rich list and how property fits into that and uk wealth generally hopefully some of that was of interest to you and some more of it was inspiring certainly for me to see almost a quarter of the top 100 people having their main wealth and property really motivates me to get out there and make a success at growing my own little property empire. Hopefully it's done the same for you. If you've got any questions or comments, by all means feel free to get in touch with me, Mike at InsidePropertyInvesting.com or reach out to us on Facebook or Twitter and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks a lot.